everybody and welcome to Sweet Adeline's International Zoom Chats 2020. Our guest today is an exclusive black presenter with Unique who thrives on making a positive difference in the universe today. She's an experienced direct sales professional and has been doing that work for over 22 years. She's lived all over South America and in Southern California loves good food, conversation, and opportunity. She currently resides in Las Vegas, Nevada with her husband, Joe, and her 16-year-old daughter. Now, Jan is also a passionate Sweet Adeline and sings bass with Lady Luck Showtime Chorus. She's their marketing coordinator, and she is also the marketing coordinator for Region 11. She's been on the international stage a number of times in her 15-year career and done all kinds of jobs in her choruses and it, we're really lucky to get to talk with her today. Um, so Jen, welcome to Zoom Chats 2020. Hi, Renee. <laughs> and so our challenge is going to be corralling our energy. That's what right. we want you all to know. The two of us combined on a screen. <laughs> we're both trying to sit still. I'm yes. not doing so well already, but we're gonna try. We're gonna all try. Right. I, do, I do, I remember the first time I met Renee, I was like, oh, she's my people, she's my people. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking like this a thousand miles an hour. So we're going to be very calm today. All right. So Jen, we want to talk today about storytelling. Yeah. And she has uh, some great information for regions, quartets, courses, things that we can use right now to continue to get, get contacts with new members, to expand our social media presence, even while we're in shutdown. So, Jen, you talked with me about storytelling. So can you tell us about that process and why it works? Absolutely. So it's one of my favorite all-time things because, you know, people really get excited and get connected to the story of your life and why Sweet Adelines has made a difference. Yeah. So I can, if I just meet an, a stranger in the street, so like, let's say I met you at a grocery store, or I met you at church, or I met you at temple, it doesn't matter, wherever I meet you at a party or whatever, and I say to you, and they're like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh, well, I have rehearsal. And then Renee would say, oh, <laughs> rehearsal for what? Exactly. I say, oh, I sing with the four part acapella harmony chorus. Really? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. You know what I mean? It's like jazz hands and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's great. And, and if we have that conversation, that's where the conversation ends. You know what I mean? So there's no further, further conversation with it. And so when you have your testimonials and when you have your stories fine tuned, when it has the beginning in the middle of an end, and you're able and you know your story, that's what's compelling people to be a part of something fabulous that we already know. So can you, yeah, so, and this is a direct sales technique is what it also sounds like to me. And I it, learned something fabulous this year that if we approach someone and say, I'm in a championship quartet and we go to contest and we've always done really well, their brain says, oh, I'm not good enough for that. I can't do that. So there's an immediate shutdown when you start with those things. Is yeah. that kind of what you're talking about? Absolutely, because when you say, so number one, somebody might say, I'm not a champion, so that I can't do it. Yeah. Or number two, they'll say, oh, I, I don't sing well enough. You know what I mean? Or number three, there's no way that I have time to be a champion. So, all, so somebody else is already telling an internal dialogue and story about all the things that they can't. Same and it's enough. not just a direct sales and network marketing industry thing, it's a, that it's a commercial. I mean, imagine watching commercials, the commercials that you watch on TV and Super Bowl and all of them, the commercials that tell a story are the ones that are compelling and the ones that people remember. And then learning how to share your story so that somebody can be like, oh, this might be the right fit for me. This might be something that's for me. You know what I mean? To so open I know, it. yeah, every Sweet Adeline has their story. That's, yeah. that's really something I've always noticed from the time I began, either about our first night about what it was like when we found it, how we found it. Most say, I wish I'd found it sooner. Yes. And But help us refine our story so we know what happened to us when we joined. And how do we refine our story so it has a clear beginning, middle, and end that makes somebody think, I want to do that. So when you're, when you're thinking and reflecting on your own personal story, think about how your life was before Sweet Adeline. So that's the before of it. So I can tell you, me personally, so what I know is that my daughter was um, 18 months old or, or 14 months old 
and I had not sung in 12 years. So I actually was a performer before and I was a theater arts major, but life got in the way and I stopped performing and I stopped singing. So I already had had this hole in my life. So I knew that. So that's my before story. So not only did I stop performing and hadn't sung and performed for 12 years. Second of all, I was a new mom, right? Third, I was living in a new state and I'd only been there a few years, like, and I didn't have any friends. So I was looking for something, like all of a sudden I was losing myself. Like I didn't have something for me. I was this new mom. So really taking the before story, the part that ached for more, you know what I mean? When you take that part, that longing, and that's the beginning. So that's the, like, you know what? I really miss singing. I used to perform all the time. I sang, I had solos from the time I was 10. I was in shows. That's not being a braggart. It's like, that's being who I truly was. And then all of a sudden I wasn't doing that anymore for 12 years. So there was a hole. Yeah. So taking that and then going to, well, I started having discussions with my husband that I thought I got to find somewhere to sing. I just want to sing. And I didn't want to be in a band, you know what I mean? Because that's not who I was. I was used to being on a stage and wanting to sing that way. And that's when Joe found a newspaper article and we don't use papers anymore. We truly use, you know, social media and other things, but there was a thing that said Divas Wanted and Joe literally handed me the paper and was like, this is my wife. <laughs> this is for you, because you need to go. Divas wanted. Go. go here. So yes. So that was Joe. And then the whole thing of it, then I went to, then the story of my first night and walking into Velvet Hills with Kathy Carmody. And I literally walked in, heard the harmonies, heard Kathy speak. And I was like, oh, these are my people. What do I need to do? Where do I sign up? What do I do? I, I immediately felt my body have tingles. I immediately knew this was home and, but I was so scared. I was so scared because I hadn't sung in 12 years. And then, and I had just been a musical theater girl forever. And then I had Susie Johnson say to me, she goes, oh, you have really good resonance. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? I was like, they're asking, they're what? saying words, they're like diphthongs and all this stuff. I was like, just give me the, I was like, I don't know any of that. And so I learned and, and I auditioned pretty quick because I was so scared that I was like, I need to do this fast or else I will talk myself oh, out my of it. Gosh. Really? Yes. Totally. I'm like a person that is like, I have to do it now or else I'd be scared or I won't do it. So what I found though, so here's the back story. Another part of the story is this that is the third piece, this is my, I had a high school sweetheart and we went to college together and we broke up in college. The first like six months we were in college and we broke up and he was also a theater arts major. Well, he told me that I was a bad performer. He told me I wasn't good at singing. He told me I wasn't a good actress. And that made my self-esteem just tank. And when I went to audition, all of those backstories about being not good enough were going through my head. Oh. So here I had this amazing group of women saying, you can do it. This is fun. This is a good time. So, so I had to fight certain demons or certain thought processes that weren't serving me in my self-esteem to basically overcome that thought process. So not only did I find a home, did I find myself, did I find new friendships? Did I find, was I a better mom, wife, and friend because I was a part of this organization? my leadership skills grew because I was then immediately put, I immediately wanted to be a part of it. So I started joining, like helping and doing teams and doing things. And they're like, oh, you're creative. And oh, you know how to do makeup. And oh, <laughs> so, I mean, it was, and it became this thing. And so then that led me into other things, um, into being on the team, being on the regional team, doing stuff for international, you know what I mean? So this journey, of leadership is nothing that I planned on getting. Right. And and many, many, many of our members tell some version of that story. So they come through the door um, thinking, okay, I'll go and check it out and find an entire environment where they can be themselves and grow in ways they never expected. 
So how do we do that? How do we tell? So you have the before and then you have the, have you, the discovery how you joined and how do we bring it around? And you have the after. Hand. Yeah, you have the what 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 has changed in your life? What has so you have the beginning, the 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 thought process of what you were missing, how you were missing out, the pain of it, you know, and then you have the discovery of like, oh, here's sweet Adelines. And then you have the after story of the afterwards. But you know what people really resonate with? It's not the after and it's not the middle, it's the before. So it's the before part that's really important to share because that's the part that they're where they are right then and there. And what we have to offer is a gift to people, whether it's on Zoom right now or where they're, because we're not meeting in person right now because of COVID-19, you know, it's creating community, creating that story and fine tuning your story, practicing your story with your other sweet Adeline um, family and having that conversation with them so that you get good at telling your story so that you tell it more often when you're at a party instead of saying, oh yeah, I have rehearsal, you know, I and sing. so, so I sing. Well, because we have uh, in the Zoom rooms, I mean, for those courses that are tr trying Zoom, which I hope everybody will give it a try. If you have somebody who finds out about it or sees a posting that you've done about come to our Zoom rehearsal, they're still going to feel the uniqueness and the energy of what a Zoom room of Sweet Ad filled with Sweet Adelines can offer. It's a, it, it'll be something they've never experienced before, or maybe the last time they experienced it was in high school or college when they were in a performing group. And, and there is that sense of, wow, they all look like they're having a great time <laughs> and they want to be part of it. So we, we can still be thinking about member recruitment right now, right? Absolutely. And absolutely. Um, I, I think that we should stream our rehearsals. I think that we should go on zoom and I think that we should actually stream them to our Facebook business pages. Ooh, and but how, wait, 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 wait. So what do we do if nobody in the chorus knows what any of those words you just said mean? You have to find somebody in your course that knows what zoom is. And then you have to have them either contact your regional person to find out what that is. So basically when you have your zoom room, you can set it up. You can set up the meetings. You can set up your rehearsals. So like when everybody's on the pictures, just like the Muppets, you know what I mean? All the people, the Brady Bunch, all those people, you can actually, there's a setting on there that allows you to stream. So what streaming means is that you are connecting this kind of thing right, right to the day. live stream or you can record it. But if you do it live and you set it up, it's then going to show up in that newsfeed and anybody can be a part of it. So, so anybody we, can watch it. And, and social media right now is really the main place where we can share what it is we do and who we are, right? It, it, it really is. I mean, social media. So you have, um, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have TikTok, you have Twitter, you have um, uh, LinkedIn, you have all of these different avenues that you can do. Um, also, so face, so YouTube really isn't um, social media. No, However, no. YouTube is the number two largest search engine out there. So you can actually stream to YouTube if you don't want to do Facebook. Um, and what that does is that opens up an audience to everybody. So for example, when let's say me in Las Vegas does it, you know what I mean? And then people I know see it. And I have friends in Chicago where they, where you are, and they're like, oh, Jen, this is so cool. Actually, that's something that's special because you don't know whoever watches the community or if you're telling a testimonial, somebody says, well, I want to sing. I used to sing. And then I simply say, where do you live? Where, let me find the, let me help you find the course nearest you. And then I go to Sweet Adelines International, type in their zip code and say, this is the ones that are near you. So right now, um, because we're not able to live stream a rehearsal, we could live stream Zoom rehearsals, but there isn't group singing, so that won't you know attract somebody's ear necessarily. But we could have somebody from their phone that has YouTube on their phone could record themselves live right to YouTube talking about why they joined their chorus. Absolutely. You can hold up your phone and you can do a video and you could absolutely re like put it on a bunch of books, stand by a window and, and 
and tell, <laughs> and tell your story or say, or absolutely. That's what I would really encourage everybody to do is to figure out your beginning, your middle and your end of your story. You said they should contact the marketing person in their region if they have questions about how to do this. So is there really a network of marketing people all helping each other? I hope so. There are. I mean, if somebody in my, any of the people in my region or even across Sweet Adelines, I mean, I want all rising tides raise all ships. So <laughs> if, uh, if all of us are working together to do this, then their only way to to do it is is up and i'm so looking forward to when we can physically sing again but that just because we're not doesn't mean that we're not still able to make a difference because I, I think right now as much as we are all missing being together this is actually the perfect time to be talking about why we love it our ideas are crystallizing about what it actually means to our everyday life what it has brought to each of us personally and so our testimonials now have an extra added layer that is a positive, not a negative. We are missing being together, but we're extremely driven to make that happen again. And so this is the time to get the word out there and be talking about what it feels like since we have had that weekly rehearsal um, taken off of our calendar, so to speak. Right. And once you're in it a while, you get very used to it and it's just what you do. And then when it was, um, you know, whisked away and we all realized we weren't going to be on the risers for however long. Uh, it, it, it was a big light bulb for so many people. Wow, my whole week has been constructed around this in a really positive way. So we've got to capture that energy because I think it would be very enticing to, you know, people looking for something for themselves when we are all able to get back to creating this kind of music. Absolutely. And the joy, I mean, just the, I truly believe in the line, harmonize the world, that's what we do. And it's a very um, rewarding thing. And more, and I, and I do wish that I would have found it sooner. Um, and I want more people to be a part of it with me. So. All right, so that's great tips. We have everybody out there, go find your marketing coordinator in your region. Your region has a website and a Facebook page where you can find out who the marketing coordinator is. You can reach out to Jen. Um, there's people out there to help you. So don't let the technology intimidate you. Um, everybody right now is experimenting. I think that social media makes it look like it's all very, very difficult. And really, you can experiment and you can figure some of this stuff out. And it's rewarding to do that. I'm certainly having that experience by getting to Zoom chat with so many people that have so many ideas to help all of us. There's so many people in your chorus or people that you know that will be able to help you. And once you do it a few times, it's like riding a bike or anything else you do. You yeah. do it a few times and it becomes easier and easier every time. Absolutely. So Jen, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Aww. We're gonna we're gonna get this out there and hopefully inspire people to figure out their beginning, middle, and end and practice their story so that other people can experience the joy of Sweet Adelines and help us harmonize the world. Just thank you so much for everything that you offered today. It's been great talking to you. No, you too, my friend. You too. See Love you soon, you. I hope. All right. Yes, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm ready to travel. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>